This segment is brought to you by Sumall. We were able to bolt on some Bluetooth and bolt on some other stuff, and now it's just being like, is it wireless? Because we right. can sniff it. <laughs> yeah. Right. You got some hardware? What does it speak? Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. And so uh, are these like off-the-shelf parts, or how does, how does the hardware come together? Well, this is, um, this is a prototype. Mm -hmm. that uh, Mike designed primarily. And it uses this kind of off-the-shelf Zigbee module over here. Um, and then it has, on the underside, it has this off-the-shelf Bluetooth module. And so he pieced it all together. Um, he has some extra power stuff that probably won't end up in the final design. And then he has just a, a single USB microcontroller that coordinates everything and can talk over the USB interface. So. And uh, right now, he and I are working together uh, on a redesign just to make it a little bit more manufacturable. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we're kind of doing away with some of these parts and, and like replacing the Zigbee module with kind of our own circuit built out of discrete ICs instead of... Ooh, you're building your Zigbee module instead of using like an off-the-shelf uh, dev board kind of thing? Right, yeah. I mean... <laughs> that's, that's like <laughs> and that's typically what happens at this phase in the design. First, you get something working, yeah, and then you say, "Oh, gee, I could sell it, but it would cost five hundred dollars." And <laughs> well, maybe you, we can reduce that barrier maybe we to entry. Can reduce that a little yeah, bit. you get that you get that barrier to entry down, and then suddenly everybody starts going like, "Oh, it's affordable to hack Zigbee," and like it just becomes like you know an additional aspect of the penetration test. It's like, sure, we came into your facility and broke your Wi-Fi, but you didn't even know you had like PLCs running Zigbee, mm -hmm. and then suddenly like you, you know what I'm talking about? Some industrial manufacturing. I'm sure that these guys are just like, you know, speaking to each other in plain text because who would have thought? Right. Yeah. Or if they use encryption, they use symmetric encryption with the same key all over the place. Isn't that the case with a lot of like some of the research that I've seen coming out of Zigbee in the last two years at the cons has been much that uh, the Zigbee manufacturers will use the same key, like their vendor ID mm -hmm. basically, as the key for all of their devices. That's That definitely happens, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And you know, we can't say with a lot of certainty how often that happens, mm -hmm. uh, but we're trying to build well, the tools you wouldn't, you won't be to able, be able to, to until that. you have that, yeah. Right. yeah. That is so wicked. I can't yeah. wait to see uh, this coming out. Um, what else? What is this mammoth you've been hacking on here? Okay, so this is... This how, did, is how did you actually, better yet, how did you get it on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> I actually got two of those on the plane. Yeah, nice. I, I don't know why, but for some reason, I never get hassled for my electronics. Yeah? Not even for these things. I travel, you, well, yeah, I you travel, travel with dozens star. of those. <laughs> I, I love that. Is this your business card? <laughs> yes. This is so fantastic. Yes, I travel with dozens of those all the time, and I've never been questioned about them. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. Huh. But at any rate, this is, this is my obsession lately, and this is what I'm spending most of this year on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a project called HackRF, and it is a software radio peripheral. So the, um, you know, the, the technique of software radio or software-defined radio is digitizing radio waveforms or, or taking a digital waveform and turning it into an analog waveform and spitting it out over an antenna. It's kind of like um, uh, a sound card, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Except you replace... A DAC and an ADC. Yeah. yeah. And it's a peripheral for a general purpose computer, your laptop or whatever. And you, you plug in an antenna or two on the front end and it basically an interface between the antenna and the computer. Well, those already exist. I mean, the like the Open BTS guys and the you know software radio guys like are using the uh, what is it called um, the software def software peripheral radio Thinking of the USRP, USRP from the Edison Universal Research. Software Radio, radio peripheral. peripheral. Yes, right. It's a great uh, great tool. In fact, you used it. I do. Years ago, uh -huh. I remember talking to you at ShmooCon when you uh, were giving a talk talking about uh, Bluetooth hacking. Yes. This was before the Ubertooth, and you were using yes. like how many USRPs, and you were only able to right. get like this much data? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I did that work with Dominic Spill, and he and I, we actually did implement, um, through kind of a crude hack, we did implement all channel Bluetooth monitoring with one uh, USRP2 at mm -hmm. the time. Um, but it was this crazy thing with intentional aliasing of the radio channels. So, like, we'd have multiple channels kind of on top of each layer, on top of each other, and that reduced the space that we were sniffing. And mm -hmm. it was complicated and kind of kludgy and expensive. I mean, that solution cost like $2,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, so you're setting out now to build something that's more specific. You're, you're only targeting like certain frequencies or? 
How well, does that go? Actually, that I'm, trying to play go, with HackRF? I'm trying to go broader with HackRF I'm, in terms of frequencies. Um, the, the project goal, the officially stated goal, is to go from 100 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz, all on one board. 6 gigahertz? 6 gigahertz, You yeah. know there's some fun stuff. Oh, I think it's in 60 gigahertz, actually. There's, like, oh, there's some IEEE, like, Wi-Fi. There's some 802.11 that does 60. There, there's some interesting stuff going on way up there, but it's not as generally useful. At, and it's also extremely hard to build hardware for. And so uh, you, that's getting into black helicopter zone. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just but some of the going lower stuff to, too. Oh yeah, yeah. Twenty five, nine hundred, all I'm the ISM get down stuff. Down to twenty five, probably. I mean, my this particular test rig, I'm missing a piece of it that I didn't take with me because it'll fall apart if I try to travel with it. But um, I had it working down to thirty megahertz and below. Uh, so probably so transmit and receive. Transmit and receive, and that's a key. Uh, a key point is that there are some interesting low-cost software radio peripherals that have been coming out lately, like, specifically like hacking, like, like hacking uh, TV tuner cards, oh, okay. for example, uh, that are receive only. Mm -hmm. And that that isn't what I'm interested in. I'm interested in something that both transmits and receives. And I want something that has a broader frequency range. Those TV tuner cards, they have some pretty interesting applications, but they don't get up even into the 2.4 gigahertz band, where there is so much interesting stuff going on. So I want to have a, a broader frequency range supported in, in a, a device that's portable, um, will run off of USB power, so you don't have to bring a extra power supplier with you to use this kind of technology. And, uh, you know, make it very wideband, very portable, yeah, and, and then very the, affordable. And then it's like generic enough where you're like, I'm interested in this crazy proprietary thing that mm -hmm. this company is using 900 megahertz for. Again, maybe it's an you know, industrial manufacturing thing and it's like, you know when it comes to those crazy you know, frequencies where the engineers are like, well, nobody would bother sniffing this, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's exactly. We're secure because nobody has the technology to see this. Right. And you, you, you hear a lot of claims like that from vendors who sell wireless equipment, whether especially proprietary systems. Um, you, in the past, you've heard those kinds of claims from people who have things like Zigbee and Bluetooth systems, too. And, and we're, we're slowly changing that, mm -hmm. right? Well, once upon a time, you know, you even heard those kinds of claims about Wi-Fi. Yeah. No one can sniff this stuff. It's too hard. Yeah. And then, you know, somebody realized, oh, these chips that are coming out have a little switch that can go into monitor mode. And somebody else realized, oh, you know, if you... Do it this way. You can you can implement this theoretical attack that no one thought was possible, and you know before you knew it, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi with security was just cracked wide open, and, and it and took the industry years to catch up. And it was because though the availability for the hackers to right. just like get gear and start doing that. So I think that you know with all of those other like Zigbee, and then even with the Hack RF with more proprietary protocols, mm -hmm. that opens up like a whole new, you know, uh, a lot of opportunities. Right. So right. walk me through this guy here. Okay. So we got two boards going on. Yep. What is the green one? What am I looking at? So the green one, these are just development boards. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, assuming this actually turns out to be a product in the future, it'll, it'll be multiple things that I have, multiple boards I have now will become integrated into a single board. You're not going to have the jumper wires where no, you got to cut the blue one so. to keep it from exploding? <laughs> no, 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 the red. Oh, duh! Uh, so this is, this is a little development board called Jelly Bean, mm -hmm. and it uses an LPC4300 microcontroller on so it. So that's this is, guy right here. Yeah, it's a brand new microcontroller. It's actually a dual core ARM. Ooh. Um, but, it's a, but it's an ARM Cortex M series, which is kind of the, the lower cost microcontrollers. It's not like one of these high-end ARMs that's in the mobile phones or something like that. Sure. It's, a, it's a lower cost. Um, but it's interesting because it has some DSP instructions. So digital um, signal processing mm -hmm. right within this chip. Right, right. A so little because bit. Because it has like, little little, like, what is a second core? Like, you got like a math coprocessor? It has there? a little Cortex M0 coprocessor. Nice. So it's, so in the long run, probably what we'll do is have the, the M0 shuttling samples back and forth over between USB and the ADC DAC. And then the M4 processor will do a little bit of DSP, just some very basic stuff like downsampling to get to the sample rate you want. Yeah, see, like that's, that. that's the thing with, or at least I was under the assumption or had been told when it comes to like USRP, they were using gigabit instead of USB. Mm -hmm. And then they were also doing a ton of processing on the board itself to be able to get the data down. Because when you start sniffing in those you know, frequencies, you've got a lot of noise and a lot of 
you know, signal and stuff. And to be able to put that through, they were using like really fancy, expensive uh, FPGAs. That right. Those uh, field programmable gate arrays. Gate arrays. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so this is actually an FPGA less design, Ooh. Um, which is a big part of how I'm able to get the cost reduced and get the power consumption reduced. I'm really excited about our new sponsor because it is a remarkably designed tool that takes the hassle out of business. You see, previously I was working with these really messy spreadsheets and painstakingly copying and pasting data from different reports, but now, now I have some all. Okay, some all. They consolidate all of your business data. PayPal, Google Analytics, Shopify, which we use for the hack shop, BigCommerce, eBay, so many more, allowing users to quickly and easily see what your customers' habits are and figure out what to do next. Are your customers new? Are they returning? What did they do last Friday? And what about the Friday before? Are you marketing to the right people? Some all empowers you with all of the tools only previously available to like big companies. So get this, some all just recently launched and is totally free for everybody right now. So jump in there, learn more about your company and its customers at someall.com.